Isn't it annoying when someone tells you, oh, just let it go when you're upset because you're stressed out, right? You're either sad or angered and someone saying just let it go might be well-meaning, but it can be very minimizing. So today we're going to talk about how to really get through the past and why let it go is probably the most unhelpful thing that anyone can say to you. My name is Michelle Pava. You're listening to The Muddy Path. You can go to muddypath.org and you can connect with me there to get background on the podcast and weekly zen and just to stay connected. There's lots to do there. So anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, The phrase let it go implies that you somehow are purposefully holding on to something and it's your fault. So saying let it go implies that you might even have a weakness. And if someone tells you to let it go, it might feel, you know, maybe like you have some shame or guilt or somehow like you're a fractured being. It's often well-meaning, but telling someone to let it go is the same as telling them to just move on, get over it. And, you know, those people might be well-meaning when they say that to you, but telling someone to just let it go is minimizing and it is insensitive. In truth, when we're holding on to something, it is a coping strategy and it is a coping strategy usually so that we can understand the trauma or the stress or the betrayal that we've experienced or are experiencing. And coping strategies just don't vanish into thin air. You have to release them through a process. And that process not only means that you have to acknowledge that you're holding on to a coping strategy, but you have to not just release the strategy, but the energy in which the strategy, the coping strategy came about. So the reason we've held on to something is sometimes more important than why we are holding on, if that makes sense. So It's very important to understand that in holding on, we have to understand that we should not just let it go, uh, believe it or not. So I'm not going to tell you that when you're stressed out or when you're thinking about something over and over, and even if it's bothering you, I don't necessarily want you to just let it go. Believe it or not, it is imperative that you take the time to accept the past accept your need to hold on and understand that there was a coping strategy and understanding how not only the past events affect you, but also the coping strategy. How does that affect you? Sometimes the coping strategy is very powerful and positive. Sometimes eh, you've outgrown it. You just don't need it, but now it's a habit. However, A lot of times when people say things like, just let it go, move on, get over it, they're kind of hoping that they don't have to deal with whatever you're going through. That's usually what's happening. When someone is saying that, it's really about them. They don't know what else to say. They don't know how to handle what you're going through or you maybe in that moment. And that's not your fault. That's not your failing That's not your fracture, that's on them. And that's okay. People are allowed to have limitations. But a denial of the past and pretending that something didn't happen in an effort to just let it go can actually cause repeated patterns in your life. We've all seen people who continue to date the same type of person over and over who we know will inevitably be hurt by this new person in some way, but that person will say to you, no, 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 this guy, this woman, this man is totally the opposite of my previous partner, totally the opposite. And the reality is, is that on the superficial side, characteristics, hobbies, how they look, things like that might be incredibly different, but deep down at the core issues, which we really can't see easily, this might be very similar to the person or the people that have hurt them in the past, including from childhood. So they're in denial and they can't just get over it because they don't even know what they're getting over. And so when people are used to denying, when, trust me, many people are, you've seen it, they are not going to be able to handle you because you're not in denial. 
So now that we've cleared that up, let's look at three ways that we can release the past and in a way that's not minimizing or patronizing or fracturing who we are. And when I say who we are in the self, we accept the past, even if it was traumatic or stressful, because it is part of who we are. It's a, it's a facet of one of the pages in our book, right? And we can't pretend it didn't happen. We can work through it and we can heal, but to deny that something has happened to us is different. Now, sure, as time goes on, you may often forget that something has happened to you. I've had traumas in my life, and for the most part, in my day-to-day, I don't think about them anymore, thankfully. But in the beginning, it wasn't like that. And if someone told me, and in fact, I, I think back and hearkening back, I do remember people saying, oh, just get over it, move on. You can't hold on to it. You can't be sad forever. Um, people will say a lot of well-meaning things. Sometimes they're not well-meaning. Sometimes they're trying to be hurtful. But sometimes people are just trying to be well-meaning. And they're going to tell you to have gratitude of all the wonderful things that are happening in your life. And how could you be sad about X, Y, and Z that happened to you when look at A, B, and C right in front of you? And that's minimizing because that also implies that you suffering or you having trauma or hanging on to something because it's a coping strategy and you're trying to figure it out and work through it and heal, it's it's implying that you don't see the beauty around you. And it's implying that in some way, your entire world is covered in whatever it is you're holding on to. And that is minimizing. It's demeaning, actually. But There are surprising ways that you can release the past, and we're going to talk about them right now. There's three of them. Number one, I want you to, drum roll, I want you to focus on not releasing it. Focus on accepting that it is a part of you, like I just talked about. I want you to understand that by trying to shake off the past, we might inadvertently shake off a part of ourselves. And this happens a lot. It may have happened to you. It it really happens to most of us. An example is that let's say someone falls in love and then they get hurt and they say, I will never trust again. Men are bad. Women are horrible. I'll never trust again. And instead of shaking off just that relationship and understanding that, you know what, sometimes people betray and they're not good people and, and I don't know where they are in their life, but I won't be with that person again. Instead, they take on this other space inside of themselves. And they say, that's it. Because of this one person, I'm never going to trust again. I'm never going to allow myself to get hurt again. And what happens is instead of just shaking off the relationship, they have now shaken off a part of themselves, the part that trusts, and that is a coping strategy. And so when they keep that, that can be very isolating. And The irony there is like, so they're very isolated and because they're isolated, they crave love, but they deny themselves love because they're punishing themselves. Really, they're punishing themselves because they felt that being betrayed was somehow their fault because they're not going to trust anymore. And it was their fault that they trusted that person. Do you see how that kind of all ties together? So one way to get through the past and release the past as a painful situation is to focus on not releasing it and making some kind of peace with it, which is the number two area I want to get into. So number two is focus on being peaceful rather than strong. You know, our society is really um, tied up in this whole, this whole vibe of being strong and Often in pain, we focus on strength rather than finding peace. The endorphins take over. We think we need to be strong. And there are times and places to be strong. But being strong and being hyper vigilant and and all of these things that we think of as strong, maybe being stoic, maybe not trusting, maybe not letting people get too close to you, not letting people walk on you, all these things that we have in our head create behaviors and these behaviors may feel like you're empowered, 
But really, if you're empowered, you're going to be really happy at the same time. And you're not going to be craving love. And you're not going to be craving and desiring all of these things that the world offers that you deserve. And then you're going to turn around and say you're empowered. No, 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 no. You're sacrificing yourself and you're punishing yourself. So often in that pain, we focus on being strong or what we think is strength, but really we need to find peace. So being strong is a byproduct actually of feeling peace. It means you've overcome something and you're accepting it and you feel resilient. So being strong without peace might work. I won't lie that it might work, but it might not work. And it often doesn't work. And when it does work, it's usually short term, but long term, it is peace that gives us the true strength. So yeah, it might make you a strong person riddled with anxiety or riddled with depression or disharmony or feeling unloved or isolated, but sometimes strong is a coping strategy that does not serve you anymore. So you have to get vulnerable and love is vulnerability. So it's not just the love of another person or a relationship. And I know I'm speaking a lot about relationships right now because, you know, honestly, a lot of our issues are with other people, right? Or the lack of, but it's also the relationship with ourselves and the relationship with life in general. And sometimes being angry at the world or angry at yourself or angry at others or having all these walls up is not peaceful. So just think about that. Are you focused on being peaceful or strong? And in that, we have to get in touch with our true self. And that's number three. So to have harmony, we need to know who we are. And we have to know that we also evolve and change and have transitions. And we also may take a couple of steps backwards in some of those transitions. So it's easy to get bogged down by coping strategies as the days go by especially if we haven't worked on it or accepted the past. And when that happens, we might lose a sense of who we are. Just like I said earlier, you know, maybe you were really a trusting person by nature, as we mostly are. But then if you decide that you're not going to trust anyone or an entire gender, then are you really your true self? Then you're fighting yourself. You're at war with yourself. So if we continue to explore who we are, and to revisit who we were as children and who we might want to be and work towards that, we can then focus on our true selves. The past shapes us, good or bad. And if we deny the past, we deny what we might have learned and the coping strategies that are badges of life learning. And also we have the depth to overcome. So the key to releasing the past is actually making peace with it. And when you do, it no longer controls you. So when you're no longer controlled by living in the past, you're in a state of freedom and you're in the present moment. And I know in theory, that is not always easy. So I'm not professing here right now or espousing right now that this should be easy peasy for you, no problem. It could be a trouble, excuse me, a trouble or troublesome, but it also could be easy. It could be simple. So why not try it? And even if it is challenging, still why not try it? It's better than the alternative of being isolated or being angry or sad or anxious or depressed. It's just truly finding that peace. And so don't let someone make you feel minimized or patronized or diminished in any way, shape, or form because they have decided to tell you just move on. Because moving on will put you in denial or it will put you in shame or both. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be in peace and in harmony. So Sometimes we have to look at the scariest parts of our lives or the crevices that we have not visited too often, and we have to get to know it. We have to get to know those spaces, whether it's one, an it, or a them, a many, we have to dive in there. And it doesn't mean you have to, I always say this, you know, when suffering comes to the door, 
I want you to get to know it, see what it has to say to you, but I don't want you to invite suffering on the couch and, you know, make it tea and ask it if it needs, a, you know, a place to sleep. I don't want you to get so comfortable with your suffering that it becomes bigger than you. I want you just to acknowledge it so that you're not fearful of it, so that you're not anxious or depressed or angry at it, but that you see it as just a normal aspect of something that you're going through. And your coping strategies are there for you, not in spite of you. They're there for you. It doesn't mean that every coping strategy is healthy, right? So overeating or addictions or whatever, these are not healthy coping strategies. But you know, when they first started, they did serve a purpose for you. And that's why they continued. And so now I want you to have a new purpose and a new coping strategy, which is focus on not releasing the pain. I want you to focus on being peaceful rather than strong all of the time. And I want you to get in touch with your true self. And again, the key to releasing the past is to make peace with it. And when you do, it will no longer control you. And again, when you are not controlled by the past, you are in a space of freedom in the present moment. On that note, I would love for you to visit me at muddypath.org or at michellepava.com so that you can get weekly Zen and that we can stay connected. Thank you for listening and please follow along.